Lou, we are back. We are finally back in studio. What's yes. going on? Yes, about that. Welcome home, brother. Oh my God, it's good to be back. How was it, man? That's that's a surreal experience. So what Lou's saying is, I had two weeks in Brazil. While the World Cup is... I mean, While the World Cup's going on. Hello. I'm on these janky streams trying to catch our Steeler games. Yeah. We did a Zoom podcast. It's a wild experience. But the planets have aligned again. Yes, we're back. And a little Sunday morning pod, a little... Baltimore Steelers preview. It's our first time doing that. First Sunday morning pod. Yep. It's going to work like this. We're going to break down the game. We're going to talk about what this game means. A little award season ceremony, yep. we say. L- what do we say? Not mid-season, but a little like... It's eh. like... These will probably stick. I and let, Foreseeing some something that may be great. Yes. Um, and then, at the very end, we got some bets. Yes, sir. Are you right, still hot? Right Last time we did a pod, you were winning like thousands of dollars every single... Uh, yeah, let's not get crazy. But yeah, we got some fun ones for you guys. Are you still hot though? Um, I got hot right before you went to Brazil. You went to Brazil. I cooled down a little bit. Now you're back. So I'm thinking it's you being here and I'm trying to get back on the... Oh yeah. Because it's to... summer down there. I'm about to heat it up. That's right, let's get we're it. trying to catch. You know, it was summer down there. still is. But it was rainy like every single day. El Nino? It was El Nino. Yeah. Luis, Luis, yeah, yeah. Very geographic. I get that. So when you uh, say summer, what do you mean, like, temperature-wise? Oh, like, the last game, the devastating game that was a loss. I was watching these games in downtown Sao Paulo, and it was 90. Okay, no. We're talking... That's summer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not... It's, like, spring, technically, but For it's them. it's hot. Uh, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Um, Ravens. This is it. This is it. This feels like the right matchup. This should be the game that we get at home late in the season that could make or break the season. This is the time of year where it starts, where watching the game, going to the game, it ticks up a little bit. You could feel it. You could feel it in the crowd. You, it's one of the, it's it's December football. It's like a do or die. We're we're at that point in the season. This is, is going to get fun. And since it's Sunday morning, we can give the people a little preview. I'm going to get this podcast out lightning quick. Lightning. It's going to be in people's ears as the kickoff's going. You know, you'll finish right at kickoff. What's the matchup to watch? I have one in mind. What are you thinking? I mean, to be honest with you, I I I can foresee how defensively Steelers are going to play without Jackson. I'm not terribly afraid of Huntley. I think that he's a very capable backup. But I think the Steelers could keep that under. I think my inch is going to be rookie Kenny Pickett against a savvy Baltimore defense with John Harbaugh as coach. It's time for us to have that rookie quarterback, young quarterback against a veteran defense. We're going to see how that goes. I think we should just get used to Tyler Huntley. We saw him last year, too, at, at Heinz Field. Sadly, I think they play better against Jackson. To be honest with you, wait. He did start at Huntsfield. Am I wrong on that? Who? Huntley last year. Either that or the year before, but yeah. Whatever. We've seen a lot of Tyler Huntley. Um, he definitely started in Baltimore. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, that was because Lamar was hurt again. That was week uh, eighteen. Yeah. Um, I was at that game. I thought it was going to be Ben's final game. I made the trip down uh, with my the, dad and uh, brothers. Watch sacked. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, my matchup. Yep. It sounds so basic. It sounds so cliche. But it's going to be our offensive line and our running back versus their defensive front. So I don't remember a half where we haven't been able to run the ball and have a, had a good half. It is so closely correlated to today's NFL, especially with all the numbers going down. You, you mentioned before we went on the total in this game is like 37. Yeah, That's a ground and really, pound game. It's it's And like you said – if you don't know, if, no one's blowing anybody out today. It's like what a what a shocking revelation by Frank on this podcast. Oh, we need to run the ball well, but it's like oh, it's true. Well, here's the thing, I, and obviously, so we both feel like the matchup to watch is our offense and their defense. We both we see it on different we see it on different levels, but the crux of it is our offense, their defense. Pretty much, uh, I mean, T- Tyler Huntley is like the thing is with him. I would say it's the other way around, but you just know what you're getting. It's much more consistent. You know he's not going to be a guy that that beats you. If you're winning a game with Tyler Huntley, it's a game where he doesn't make mistakes and Correct. you can you can grind it out. Correct. He do, he does run, not as good as Lamar. 
He does. He can throw. I think better than Lamar because I think Lamar's a pig. But that's me. Um, is he smarter than Lamar? I don't know about that. Game wise, game decisions. No, I mean he's like he's one of these guys that comes in. And he's a serviceable backup. I agree with that hundred percent. I would. I wouldn't mind having him as my backup. Yeah, he's a. He'll win you some games, but he's not. It's not going to be because of him. Yeah, and I mean he's he's a prototypical NFL average quarterback. He just has to be more of fit their system because of his legs and his capabilities that through the ground game. Can I give you one bonus matchup? Sure. We didn't get to talk about this this week because it's Sunday morning, but a lot of news this week about George Pickens. Yeah. We covered, we were on this, Lou. Yes, we were. We were right on top of this, and I was like, hey, it was like last pod or two pods ago, I was like, are we going to talk about his body language? Because it's sour. Yeah. Um, And no one really had talked about it. Then last week happened. So do you, are you saying it as the matchup to watch for is him against Baltimore or him against himself? No, no. Pickens versus Tomlin. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the matchup. Okay. It's Pickens versus Tomlin because Tomlin comes out in the press conference afterwards. It's like, ah, I'd rather say sick him than, you know, slow down or like, I I forget what he, he's basically saying like, it's not an issue right now because I want guys that are fired up. Oh, we have a Kobe's we have a guest up. here. My cat's fired up. Kobe's fired up. He's just happy I'm back. I don't know. Um, look, the matchup has to be that because we have seen this so many times now. We saw this with um, Antonio Brown, of course. Yep. We saw this a little bit with Deontay. Now he's got nothing to say because he drops the ball. Right, so now he's out now. He can't say anything. But now it's going to be with Pickens, too. It's like... People talk about all oh, the Steelers way, and anyone who thinks the Steelers way is like a real thing is just lying to themselves. You know, we have the same it's like just a thing of the past. It's not true anymore. But you would like it to be true. You would like it to at least mean we're a disciplined football team who respects the coach and respects each other and plays selflessly. That's not what I'm seeing. Well, I think it was interesting, and when all that happened, it, it it's it's kind of how how it came to be. He did the whole arm motion and throw me the effing ball after Deontay caught the ball and fumbled it. So it kind of looked even worse because, A, I'm not getting the ball, and, B, I'm putting him already down. He's down. And that's when Cam went over and talked to him. Um, I think this is going to show a lot today. I don't think you're going to see that today. I really don't. Now, do I think he's going to get the ball more today? Yes, but I don't think you're going to see the antics, if that's what you want to call it. He had two targets, right? Yeah, two targets, one catch. Okay, it's and not the a- catch was forced. It was like right after halftime, like a two yard out. It was a f- like they we knew that, but like that was purposeful. Yeah, it's it was a it was a low stat line game, but it's like he's a rookie, man. You cannot be acting like that as a rookie. Like you're not, you know, he, he, he use a Georgia reference. You're not AJ Green. He's got the same body type as AJ Green. Went to the same college as AJ Green. You're not AJ Green yet. But could you imagine? Let's say, I, I, I was a bit under the weather this week, so I watched a lot of old school Steelers stuff. Could you imagine if Pickens did that during like the 05 team? Well, can you set the scene here a little bit? What are you doing? Are you just like laying in bed? Like Oh, okay. Like Louie was down bad. Okay. Like I haven't been this bad in a while. So like Tuesday morning, I'm, way, I'm, I'm down. Okay. I've been down all week. I just, so I was bored. So I downloaded, you know, YouTube TV on the phone and I'm watching America's game. You downloaded YouTube, like you signed up for premium? No, I just like put the app on the TV. Oh, okay. All right. I'm a simple man, Frank. I'm very simple. So I put the app on the TV, (laughs) you know, I'm watching the Frank Michael Smith show, you know, okay. So I'm watching, you know, the 05 America's game and there's like three times I I cried. I'm not gonna lie. I cried like three separate times. People don't know what that is. Explain that game. So, um, America's Game is a 45-minute documentary that they do for each team that wins the Super Bowl every year, from 1969 or whenever, all the way up. So, the 2005 America's Game is the Steelers' season, and it's told by Cower, Joey Porter, and Ben, okay? And they show highlights of the whole season and the great moments and interviews, and it's fantastic. So, three separate times in there, Louis... Louis was tearing up because it just brought back so many good memories. Anyway, could you imagine if George Pickens, or for that matter, Antonio Brown acted like that during, on one of those teams? 
I mean, not even A B was. Joey would have put him through the goalpost. You just can't do that. You I mean, it should be a bigger deal than it is. I know it got reported, but it's like, are we nuts? Like he he doesn't have ten touchdowns. I, I guess my my the the crux of my saying is he wouldn't rookies would d- did not act like that 10, 15 years ago. No rookie did. It's a you are a, a rookie. Like we saw Devin Bush have a great rookie season. How we feel yeah, about Devin Bush yeah. now? Right. You have a four plus five or a or I'm sorry, four plus one or a four year contract. A lot can change. Sure. Don't act like you signed a hundred million dollar deal. Don't like it's it just rubs me completely the wrong way. It it is it just it's selfish. And in his interview on Tuesday, he was say he was comparing. His aunt, I don't know if he, he was saying how, you know, talking about different wide receivers like T.O. and like. He mentioned T.O. a bunch of times. I'm it's like, like yo, like, that's the wrong guy to mention. And bro, he was in the league for 10 years when he started acting like that. He wasn't acting like that as a rookie with uh, Steve oh, Young. That's, that's what I mean. Like the A.J. Green reference was conservative. Yeah. T.O. is, no one has scored more touchdowns than T.O. when he retired. I'm pretty sure he retired with the top. If he's not still the top, he's in the t- he's in the top five. He you know, he was one of those guys. Tio's one of the greatest players to ever lace them up. I mean, we can agree. He was and kind of he, one of those. And I've met Tio before. He's a total dick. But isn't we? But he's kind of one of those players that he produced so much. You kind of let him. Hey, you know what? If that's how he's going to act. Yeah, but no one's like Tio's an asshole. Like you shouldn't be using him as an example. Like no, yo, Tio is a bad teammate. Yeah, but he was a good player. I know, but it's like... You can't say the same thing about AB? What he was saying in the interview is he was saying like, hey, like this is, that's normal for a receiver. Like T.O.'s done it. Like T.O.'s not normal. Correct, but you, it's kind of one of those things where you, tr- it, it's a give and take. I mean, I, I... That's why I'm saying he doesn't have 10 touchdowns. If you had 10 touchdowns and 1,000 yards already, yeah, well, I might feel a little bit differently. Yeah, I might be like taking his side, but... but he's still a rookie. And I, I, I don't like that. I, I think he's going to be fine. It is a matchup to watch today, and I, I agree with you. I do think he's going to be fine, too. I think it's fine. But if this happens more this season, it only speaks more to our point about Tomlin, that nothing is in control. If you can't control your second-round draft pick, I mean... I think they knew this was a possibility when they drafted him, though. If you just can't... Dude, you just can't replace this talent. I, it's, it's such... It's so difficult. No, you got to be able to control. Like, you're Mike Tomlin. You're supposed to be the guy that connects the players. You ha- That is your only thing you do. You don't call plays. No, you, I agree. At least, at the very least, manage your team. I, and that means don't take dumb penalties. That means don't let egos get the best of it. I think today's really going to show if he can be controllable. If he, if, he, if he spouts off today during the biggest game of the year, we have a problem on our hands. All right, so Lou's prediction is... A good game from George Pickens. No craziness. And what's the score? I might have George Pickens score a touchdown. We'll talk about that later. Um, score. Low scoring game. Uh, Steelers 20, Ravens 16. Oh, that feels good. I like that. And you know why that feels good? It covers. It does. Uh, I was thinking... I was thinking 21. I... I Imagine picking the Steelers to score like twenty six points. Like, how crazy would that sound on a game like today? On any game? Oh, any game. Well, um, I mean, can we get to thirty once? Has there ever been a season we don't get to thirty once? I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm sure that's a question that some stack geek would know. I can't answer that. All right, I like twenty one seventeen. Wow, that would be over in your world. Would be. Um, 21, it's in like we don't kick any field goals and we score three Boz touchdowns. Boz is back. Three extra points from Boz. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying that's far-fetched, but I'm just saying. I'm feeling like complete I'm, I'm, three drives. Hey, two, hey, I, 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 hey I we, we talked a lot about, you know, the memories of Steelers-Raven. You know, you're in your bed, you know, with your Kleenex and your... Oh, yeah, that's, that was Lou. I, I, was, I had a Kleenex for my look, tears and a Kleenex for my nose. I'm flying back. Bought the Wi Fi on the flight. Baller move. Thank it's, you. It's a must. Absolute must. 17 bucks. Best 17 I ever spent. Easy. But look, and it's, it's usually not 17. It was a long flight. But anyway, I'm just ripping Instagram in this flight. 
I follow every single Steelers page. Yeah. All week long, they have this thing. This I haven't. I don't remember this in seasons past, but like Ravens week, and they just show all the old Ravens highlights. And like last week, and like the the Falcons and the Colts, just all these memorable. It's a great thing they do. But this week, when it's Ravens week, and you see Troy's interception I was that many just times, say that. how many times have did you I've see seen a, the highlight of Troy's interception now and, fifty times? And you know what's sick is. I still don't turn it off. No, I watch I it. I still watch it every time. I was like, I was explaining it to my girlfriend. I was like, look, like the, like you That's have to play. Took you I was like, you have long. to understand this play. She's like, ah, yeah, sure, whatever. Was, like, I don't that, get it. Was I'm like, like, no, you need to get that it. Was it. <laughs> um, but all that has me feeling like a defensive score. Ooh. That's why I say 21. Converting three drives is tough. So convert- second half right. defensive score, lock it in. Okay. All right, we got more bets in the way, though. Yeah. That's not really a bet prediction, but let's do awards. Ceremony. Okay, yep. We're, we're good on those ceremonies. All right, let's do MVP. The Steelers actually do vote on Team MVP, so. Team MVP. We will get, uh, we will get an answer on this one. Team MVP. It's yeah. kind of weird how, this, how the team votes on this, but. Because Ben would have won every year, but he didn't. He, he barely won. Go ahead. You go first. It's tough. It's tough because you're not you're five and seven. It's your boy. Well, you know, obviously. It's Minka. Yeah. He said the best season. I'm I'm just judging off that. He said um, the best season. He missed a game, but he said the best season. Yeah, I mean, obviously I would agree with you. I think he missed a game or two, actually. But. Um, I would agree with you, but um he's he's picking off the ball, man. He's making tackles, he's making good plays. Um he's an all pro. I mean, it was an – you want to talk about bad trades, okay? We we already said that this Claypool trade is going to be one of the worst in Chicago Bear history. There's no doubt about that. First-round pick for Minka, that was it? Wow. Yeah. Say what you want about the Steelers' free agents in their the drafts. We're real good at trading. Somehow, somewhat. I mean, even the A-B trade looks good. I don't. I forget who we drafted with it, but we got like a third for AB. A third I mean, and a fifth. In retrospect, you should get nothing. You just cut him. No one else got anything for him. No one else. We're the only ones that got no, something it, for him. Yeah. It looked horrible at the time, but then as time passed, you're like, ah, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, LVP. Well, we can take this a lot of different ways. Um, it would be Canada, even though. Kenny said some nice things about him, but let's do players. Um, for me, it has I wish to. the players voted on this. How great would that it, be? <laughs> ha- for me, it has to be. It just has to be Devin Bush. You haven't done anything. It's your contract year, dude. It's your contract year. It's your put up or shut up. He made a couple plays. The Tampa Bay game made a big play, but it's just not enough. It's not enough. I mean, this is your you're a starting NFL middle linebacker. Not to mention a starting Pittsburgh Steeler middle linebacker. And I'm not saying that because... Oh, it's the Steelers. I'm saying it because it's a 3-4 defense. He, You need to be more active in the tackling game as a middle linebacker. You need to be better in coverage as a middle linebacker in the 3-4 defense. He does not do either of those. In a contract year where you need to produce to not only maybe sign with the Steelers, but to sign with anybody else. And we just got a... Nothing. I, had a, I, I I don't know who else. I mean, I had could, a hard time not picking Devin Bush for this. Yeah, because I mean, you it's could bad. Pick a couple different, but people. just just for the sake of conversation, I want another one. Sure, Dan Moore. He has to be two, right? Has to be. Who else could be two? Well, because here, well, and here's why I agree with you. Because if you're a starting NFL player, and I don't care what position you play, we'll take Dan Moore for example. Dan Moore plays left tackle. Okay. If going into the draft you think that your first-round pick needs to be a left tackle and you're the starting left tackle? Yeah, that sucks, right? Doesn't look real good, does it? No. And that's not, it's not a situation where, like, you signed Trubisky and then you drafted Pickett. That kind of, like, worked out well, in the, a weird way. That was not Mitch's fault. I don't think it worked out. That's a total waste of money with Mitch. No, 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 no. I mean, it, I mean I'm saying, like, it wasn't Mitch's fault. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, he didn't play well, but. Right, but it wasn't his fault. If you're Dan Moore and you've played every game this season and the Steelers think that their number one thing they have to do is draft your position. Sorry, brother. 
That's it. There's nothing good about that because, at all. Because uh, that tells me I can't even use you as my backup if someone gets hurt. Like, I can't use you. No. I mean, that's what he will be, though. He will be a backup. There's not going to be a team that picks him up. It's like, What's oh. he signed? Two more years? Yeah, it's not going to be long. Unless something crazy happens. All right. Uh, most improved. I don't. I don't know if this would constitute as most improved. It might. Most improved, you have to be a player. Like, the way the NBA does this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Explain like, to me John, how this works. John Morant won most improved the NBA. He was already great. Yeah, wait. How, so how does that work? You just take a next step? It's a player who, like, makes a big leap from, like, you're not – you don't have a gigantic responsibility. Like Oh, then I got this nailed. Yeah, like, the most improved could never be, like, Ben. Even though if, if Ben had a bad season prior – yeah. He was a pro bowler. So it has yeah, to be it has to be a guy on the come up. Yeah, it can't be I see what you're saying. If TJ Watch had ten sacks and then he had twelve. Yeah, it's like you're already TJ. Yeah. So go ahead. Terrell Edmonds. Easy. Easy. Okay, I think a lot of people would say hi Smith. See, I think that falls under your thing though. No, no. You don't think? I don't think Highsmith is at that level before. He had a good but season. I think he had a good season last year. I think he's just improving on it. I'm phrasing it like this. But did he have a great season? Because, But I'm more impressed on the way that Terrell Edmonds is playing because I didn't expect that out of him. I think, no, I think Edmonds works here. I, I kind of, I'm not surprised by the way Highsmith's playing. I see your point. Who's been, who's been more surprisingly impressive, Edmonds? In my world, Edmonds. Because okay. I, I didn't expect a lot from him. I expected him to be average. Hey, and man, right now I, he's playing really good. Edmonds, is, the vibes are high. Tommy and I saw him at the casino. Nuh-uh. Yeah, so I've been to the casino. He was, he was super nice. He was rolling the bones. Craps player. I love a craps player. Got a boy, Terrell. Hey, man, he could be out getting into trouble. He could do it. No, man, he's having a nice, quiet night rolling the bones at Rivers. I respect What's wrong it. with that, man? N- nothing is wrong yeah. with that, man. He's, no. in a, he's in his zone. And they have so much money. Like, you could say, like, what could go wrong? Okay, yeah, for me and you, a lot of stuff could go wrong with the casino. Like, you get a little too drunk. He wasn't playing with crazy money. Yeah, that's what I mean. We we get too a little too drunk. The ATM cards comes out. We get in trouble. You know what? And he was. He can't really get in that much trouble. Oh, he was with the defensive backs too. Team chemistry. Oh, no, Boys that roll the bones together. Yes. Come on. When did you see him? Because ever since the second day was uh, playing great. It was it was Pitt basketball's opening night. I went to the game with my brothers, <coughs> and we we hit Rivers They're first. Great. We hit Rivers first. We saw the whole defensive backfield. We we're like, oh, <laughs> awesome. Man. Yeah. Is it their own table? Uh, no, no. There, there was honestly not a lot of people there, and they were just at, like, a public table. They weren't trying to be cool. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. You never told me that till now? No. Oh, that, like, <laughs> was, like, was, like, was Minka there? No, Minka was not there. Because my boy's at home studying film. That's yep, why. yep. <laughs> it was There's awesome. levels, boys! There's <laughs> levels! Um, we skipped one thing. And I'm kind of glad that we're saving this for now, because I'm hyped. Good. Give me the Steelers' record and where we stand in the division, so I don't screw this up. Oh, like right now? Yes. And we're five and seven. Five and seven, and if I'm not mistaken, our division leader has eight wins. So Baltimore, and Cincinnati are both eight and four. Yes. We're me, me, me. Cleveland and ourselves are five and seven, and our Baltimore's two and zero oh in the division. Okay, so so let me. I, I got it now. We're three games back in the division. We are two games back from the wild card. If the Steelers can come home today to the North Shore and take down the Ravens, Lou, it is on. It's on. It's on. I mean, everyone wrote this team off, and there's still a lot of work to do. You still have to win out. But this would be three wins in a row. Here's an interesting factor. I didn't see this till right now. Do you know what Cincinnati's division record is? One in three. Wow. So that means if the Steelers would win out and somehow they would get in a tie with Cincinnati. Yeah, the, the division is still open. That is a long shot. But well, it's but not since as long the NFL you think though. No, it's it, no, played the, Baltimore twice. The division we they have to lose a lot of games still. Since he does. Yeah. Baltimore, you really control your own destiny, really. Yeah. Since he's a good team, I don't see them losing that many games. But the third wild card team, if we win out, that is it is not a guarantee, but it's getting very close. Cincinnati is a tough schedule, but Lou, 
this would be miraculous. An all timer. An all timer. I mean, this would be uh, a Mike st- Tomlin Houdini pull the rabbit out of the hat. I'll take back every bad thing I said about Tomlin. everything, everything. I'll go to church on Sunday. I'll everything. I'll st- we'll do the pod live from Saints Goes in Aspinwall if if the Steelers pull this off. <laughs> Great acoustics in there. Yes, sir, baby. Um, Ring the church bells, kids. Come on. Look, there's a lot of business to be taken care of, but the remaining Steelers <laughs> schedule, we've been over this. You have it up right now, the remaining Steelers schedule. I it's know. Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Then it's your big game. Your big Christmas game is next. No, 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 no. No, no. no. At Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry. Home versus Baltimore at Carolina. Your big Christmas game at home. Lou's going to the game that never happens. Have to win that. Lou's not going. Lou's not going. Lou has the seven fishes Christmas Eve. Lou's you not- said you're going to the game. I'm not going. Dude, you, I swear on this podcast you said you're going. We're going to have to research this. Then I lied. I'll straight <laughs> up honest with you, I lied. <laughs> I thought you said it was a gift with your dad. You're going to the game. The gift is, no. The gift is the game. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. <gasps> we might have to send you to the game now. No, I, no, I can't. It's Christmas Eve at, at Nana's. No, no. How no, much no, no, money no. would you have to take to go to the game? Dude, if you offered me $100,000, i would say no, and I'm dead serious. You're a psychopath. I'm sorry. This is Christmas Eve, like huge family tradition with with my nana. Like, seven what if fishes. nana went with you to the game? No, I can't take nana. Poor little nana can't go to the game. Box. No, I can't, Frank. I can't. Anyway, moving the, on. Before the, the point. The point is, all these games feel very winnable. Well, I mean, finish it out. Home against Vegas, Christmas Eve at Baltimore, which we already talked about. Beatable. Home against Cleveland? I don't care if I don't care if fucking Watson's playing. He looks terrible. Yeah, I don't care. He's he's if you're telling me that game at home, when and they're in, I don't care if Brady circa 2004 dude, comes back. That is going to be a hot ticket if we get to oh. that point. And I have two. Oh. Lou, you're coming with me. No. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun just get to that point? Just give me oh, a chance. Oh, it'd be so man. great, man. Just give me a shot. It'd be so Is great. Is that far fetched? No, the way this team's been playing, we've looked I don't we haven't looked great, but we've looked I'm not talking We've looked like a 7 seed. I'm not talking like it's one of those things where we got to run off 10 wins in a row. 5's not like crazy. No. No, it's not. Well, don't even look at it like that. Yeah, it's like we've already got two in a row. Car- I mean, Carolina's terrible. The Raiders. Uh, did you watch that game? No, I couldn't. I saw the. I watched the whole highlights. God though. bless you for not watching it. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that in my life. In my life, they're terrible. <laughs> Even my girlfriend was like, who does not watch football at all, I was like, why are the Rams always on TV? I was like, yeah, that's a great question. Because they won last year. I was like, yeah, well, they won last year, but like, she's like, can't they just not put them on TV? And I was like, if even she can understand this. What's wild is, and it shows the parody in the NFL, and just shows how tough it is to be good, you know, consistently good, is they pick all those primetime games when the year starts. They shouldn't do that. Well, why, why are we doing this? Starting next year, you know how there's a Sunday flex? You can get flexed out. Yeah, Sunday night. It's great. You can now be flexed on a Monday night starting next year. Oh, that's weird though, because it's a different day. I mean, you have to know like two weeks in advance, but yeah. You, okay, that's you, that's fine then. You can now be flexed out. You should be flexed out of. You should be flexed out of the four fifteen slot. Well, I'll tell you this. I, I I'm not a big fan of this Thursday night. First of all, I hate that it's on Prime. That is kind of annoying. More annoying than I thought that it would stinks, be. Because you like you really can't watch it at the bar. So you really can't watch it out. You have to watch it like streaming. I have Prime, but it's it's just kind of annoying. Yeah. No, it sucks. I'm watching my phone. And, man, it's not fun. All right, Lou. Let's win some money. I've been waiting for this. Let's go. Go ahead. You go first because I got some great bets. All right. My first one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my big one for my second bet. Okay. My first one is simple. This is the Steelers spread. You can get it at minus one right now or take the money line. Money line's looking at like minus. You want, you want a live line right now? Minus 120. Well, minus 
one and a half back but back up. Minus 124 over under 36 and a half. Just take the minus one and a half. We're winning by you think four three, I think three. four, yeah. yeah. Just take that. Don't don't beat yourself on the odds. Don't think but about it. But it. it's a home yeah, don't think about it. It's a home game. We play really well in these home games, especially the defense. So yeah. I love it. Okay. Here's what Lou does. Lou doesn't do the straight bets. Lou does touchdown parlays, as we know. And I'm going to give you three today. Wow, three parlays. All require three things to happen. All require three people to score a touchdown. One is called my main, which I use just as the three favorite people that I think are going to score a touchdown. Yeah. One we call a long shot. Yeah. Which is three players that <laughs> I think are going to score, but it's going to cut. And then I run a court, what I call a quarterback parlay. I pick three quarterbacks. They cannot throw it. They have to run it. In. Yeah. They can catch it as well. They okay. Yeah, well. I guess so. Okay. All right. Main. Main is going to be T. Higgins playing Cleveland, Christian Kirk playing Tennessee, and Elijah Moore. Mm. That fifty dollar bet would pay you twenty four hundred dollars. That's the main. That's the main. It's the entree. That's the entree. Quarterback parlay. All right, this is like the. Uh, this is like the dessert. This is this is you don't you're not sure you're gonna actually, order this. Actually, oh, okay. Joe Burrow. Okay. Kenny Pickett. That's a, I mean, two things that aren't far fetched. Third one, Mike White, the uh, quarterback for the Jets. the Jets. So wait, your third one was the quarterback one. I just skipped the long shot. We'll go back. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. I, you had me confused. Sorry. They all have to run one in. Pickett, White, and Burrow. And Burrow. Or well, catch. Pickett's gonna. I mean. I mean, if we get to the goal line, you know what play Canada's yeah, calling. Right. Burrow snuck one in the past two weeks, and then I need a sneaky Mike White. What's that pay? $25 pays $13,000. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I guess that would technically be the long shot. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm all excited. Long shot. This is, this is 10 bucks pays... 2200 Okay, great. Not bad. Marvin Jones for the Jaguars. I'm a huge Marvin Jones guy. He does get a lot of red zone targets. He gets a lot of fades as well. Frank, I ain't pulling these out of thin air here. There's a lot He's of a great athlete, yeah. George Pickens. Okay. And Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines has been getting a lot of work. I was really surprised that um, Andy just wanted to be done with him. Yeah, that was weird. He's a great third down back. I get you of Jonathan. He catches the ball really well. Yeah. Also super athletic. I, there was a lot of times when I thought Naheem Hines should be like the lead guy in Indy, and he was never. So I like it. I've always liked Naheem Hines. That's it, kids. And that pays 2200 Correct. So, like, we have, if you did what I did, so like 100 bucks, you can win 30000 today. Wow. I mean, hello, guys. What a Sunday. I mean, hello. <laughs> All right, what's, Fra what's Frank's big one? Uh, we had the 6x6, six six, the Mary Lemieux special. 6x6. Six six. Can we, we have a six, explain that to the, to the people? We have a six-team, six-point teaser. So anyone who doesn't know what a teaser is, you just add six points to the spread. We start with the Either Vikings. Side. Either side. We start with the Vikings. We boost them up to seven and a half. Get right over that seven line. Love it. Plus seven and a half. Plus seven and a half. They're at Detroit. Uh, I like the Eagles. Another road team. They have to be minus one. Eagles have been solid all year. Where are they at? Uh, they're at New York. Giants. I think the Giants are frauds. So, the Texans, Lou. Wow, man. Frank got a lot of sun in Brazil, kids. <laughs> Holy hell. Look, man. This 23 and a half. That's a four-score game. Frank, you heard what I have. I have no problem with you doing anything. No team, Lou, is ever as good or as bad as they looked the week before. That's, I know the Cowboys murdered a team. They put up like 52 points. Murder. Mur that's a murder scene. Murder scene. Indy. And like 33 points in the fourth quarter. They must be really bad. We be like real bad. They lost us and they just quit. They're like, yeah, we're, we're good here. 
Yeah, we're, <laughs> I guess so. Let's go to Cancun. We're going to take the Texans uh, up to 24 and a half. 23 and a half. 23 and a half. Okay. okay. They are also at Dallas. It's my third road team. Third, Frank's a road guy. Go ahead. Now we go to the home teams. The Chargers. Chargers Sunday night tonight. Sunday night. This is not in order. They're getting nine and a half. At home against Miami. They're at home against Miami. Miami's a good team. But anytime you're getting nine and a half at home with a respectable team like the Chargers, who is healthy now? I was going to say, that's a very important point right now. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both playing there. You have to feel good about that. Yeah. Okay. This one is dicey. The oh, Cardinals. because the Texans weren't dicey? No, the Texans are a lot. <laughs> okay, the Cardinals. You just never know what you're going to get out of this team. <coughs> but night. I really, I really, yes, it's Monday night, but I really like that I'm getting the hook here. It's seven and a half. They're at home. New England comes to town. Not impressed by New England at all. I, uh, very stale. Off, stale would be the right word. Offensive. Stale, yeah. You it could say it's stale. Very... It's, it's like it looks like the Steelers' offense when the Steelers' offense is bad. Just bland. Predictable. Not, yeah, like. Not a lot of shots down the field. Mac Jones is bitching on the sideline. It's, it's an ugly scene. It's ugly. I don't know who their play caller is. Then we get to the Chiefs. Chiefs. Another road team. But they're in Denver. They're a road fa- I mean. But they're in Denver. They're a road favorite. It's. It doesn't seem like it's going to come together for Denver this year. We were all waiting for something to click. I mean, the click is not coming, Lou. We, we were tr- we were trying to figure out what Russ was cooking. He's cooking shit. <laughs> what, what would he be cooking? Russ is cooking like prison meals. Do you ever see those Twitter memes of yeah, like Russ? Remember, like, he, remember the one where he's eating a sandwich? He's like, tastes pretty good. Like, yeah, the Subway cut that, None of that looks funny anymore. No, no, it's not. Nothing's funny. Oh, man, that's a, talk about bad trades. Woo! It's two and a half. It's just KC, win by a field goal or more, and that is the surgical. Surgical. <laughs> I, that, that's for my boy Trent, the surgical six. You ever see Trent? Yes. Dude, he's so good. We'll have to get Trent on one day. Yeah. Absolutely. But shout out to you, Trent. This is my own version of the surgical six. Um, he calls it surgical. We call it the Lemieux. Yeah, yeah, because he's not from Pittsburgh. I don't have the payment on here though, so I got to check right now. Let's see. Hold on, one second. Let's see. What a way to finish the pod. Yeah. We're, we're, the the Lemieux right here is going to pay. Oh boy, Lou. Come on. It's going to be plus five hundred. Wow. You get all these points. I put eighty down to win. Four eighty. Yeah, you get your money back. Yeah, eighty to win four eighty. Wow. Yeah. Man, all right, guys. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. We made you guys thirty thousand today just by listening to us. It's a- impossible. A- thirty thousand and four eighty. Yeah. Hello. I mean, big day, Lou. Big I'm. Day. I am hyped. I feel so good to be back in the states for a, a Steelers Sunday at home. I am. I'm energized. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Before we, uh, before we uh, take off here, I think we have a. Important day coming up. Massive announcement. Massive! If you follow me on IG, if you follow Lou on... Oh, it's all over Facebook. It's all over Snapchat. (laughs) Lou Lou has all the social media handles that no one cares about covered. Facebook, Snapchat. That's right, baby. (laughs) Twitter. I I don't do IG or TikTok yet. I'm not that advanced. One day. Um, But go ahead. The big announcement is we're taking the show to the fan. 93.7 The Fan. Live. If you're in Pittsburgh, you know about it. If you, there, the fan is in a lot of cities, but it's 93.7 here. Yep. It is the local sports radio station, Giant. We're going in studio to do our show for three hours at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Yep. The juice will be flowing. Oh, man. Dream come true for the kids. We're going to talk Steelers. Yep. We're also going to do some other stuff, though. Yep. I don't want to give everything away, but we're yep. going to do some lifestyle stuff. We'll take some calls. Hopefully some people that have been listening to this pod for this whole season call in and say, what's up? I don't think we're going to have a problem with calls. I think I got that one covered. Yeah, we'll have a pipeline. Look, yeah. it's it, but the great part is so many people who've never heard us or just don't use Instagram or listen to podcasts will have a chance to hear us. Yeah. And, man, it's going to be official. Like, not that this is not official, but... This is this is live. We've never done it live. We've never done a live. Uh, you know, we really only had to retake maybe twice of like all the times we've ever done it. So I don't think that's going to be. It's just. No, we'll, we'll have no problems. It's going to be an amazing show. Gotta watch our language a little bit. Yeah, you can't you can't cuss on there. Um, I've been pretty well behaved here, so I think I can do it. Pretty well behaved, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm excited to do some other stuff. Yeah. Like they don't just want us to talk about sports, which is great because it's three hours. We have a lot to play with. Yeah. We're going to talk about, I mean, some of the funny stuff we've done in here before, telling stories, talking about like family traditions, you know, like anything. You can really use this time to be creative. So right. I'm pumped. It's going to be a great show. We're looking for calls. So if you've been- Tuesday, Tuesday, December 13th, 7 o'clock. 93.7 on the radio. If you don't have the radio, download the Odyssey app, and it'll be, you look up 93.7, the fan in Pittsburgh, you can listen to it right there. Or just type it in. Their website's got all the info. Exactly. Um, but I'm pumped. Lou, let's get it. W today, W Tuesday night, and then, playoffs. Wow, wow. 30000 bucks. Wow. Dude. Let's go. Things are looking let's up. Let's go with this team. <laughs> That's it.